Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, respected authors, participants, session chairs, keynote speakers, and my dear lovely students. Welcome to Contemporary Technology ICSCT 2021, organized by Bangladesh University of Business and Technology, BUPT. I, Professor Dr. Muhammad Anwar Hussain, Professor and Chairman, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, UBT. And I am the coordinator of today's session for ITPULI BDS activity titled AI in Cancer Pathology. First of all, I would like to introduce our honorable session chair, Professor Dr. Celia Shahnaz, very shortly. She is the senior member of ITPULI and fellow IEP. She received PhD degree from Concordia University, Canada. And she is currently a professor of the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, Guet, Bangladesh. She has published more than 150 international journals and conference papers. She is a recipient of Canadian Commonwealth Scholarship and Bangladesh Academy of Science Gold Medal for her contribution in science and technology. Her include the area of sequencing for pitch analysis and its enhancement, audio visual recognition for biometric, biometric security, control system, robotics, pattern recognition, machine learning, and deep learning for audio, video, biomedical, power signals, multimodal emotion recognition, and humanitarian technology. She was the chair of ITPULI BDS, and due to her contribution, ITPULI BDS has come to the present place. She is an internationally well-known person, and she received many awards from women abroad. Now, I would like to request our honorable session chair to introduce the resource person of today's event. And for conducting this session, I would like to mention that this keynote session will be continued from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And within this one hour time, 40 minutes is allocated for the resource person and 20 minutes for discussion and photo session. Now, I would like to request our honorable session chair, Professor Dr. Celia Shahnas, to, to introduce the session chair and conduct this session as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Professor Anwar, for such a humble introduction. It's a great honor to be here among you. And uh, it's a great, um, I should say, opportunity to congratulate ICSC T2021 organizers for doing such a tremendous work in uh, this challenging and pandemic situation. So this is a session organized by IEEE Balan the section. Actually, IEEE Bangladesh section uh, promotes the diversity and inclusion because IEEE is uh, one of the main mission and vision is promoting diversity and inclusion. And IEEE Bangladesh section always try to remain aligned with the mission and vision of IEEE. So with that um, uh, motivation, we have really invited um, uh, a scientist who is a woman, but she is a scholar. The first of all, she is a scholar, although she is a woman. So Dr. Sabina VVK has received a PhD degree from the University of Kerala in 2018 and MTech degree in computer science with a specialization in digital image computing from the computer science department of Kerala University. Uh, you know, for your kind information, IEEE Kerala section has the highest number of IEEE members around the whole world. And in IEEE, there are 160 countries, more than 342 sections. It's a great honor that we are getting a scholar from such a, uh, such a, uh, I should say, a big section where there are a lot of activities, including the research activity. She has been working as an associate professor, electrical and electronics engineering department of TKM 
College of Engineering, Kollam for the last 23 years. Her research interests include the pattern recognition, machine learning, medical image processing, and many other things. She is the award winner of many award winner, and she holds an active membership for IEEE, Computational Intelligence, Women in Engineering, Engineering Medicine, and Biology. For your kind information, I will be pasting her brief bio in the chat box so that you can know about her. Actually, we always try to focus and train our younger generation about research and innovation. Uh, which is emerging in nature. She will be talking about a research which is very emerging and use of artificial intelligence in the area of biomedical and signal processing. Without further delay, let us welcome a scholar, a hardworking person, a person who has uh, grown with her merit, not as a quota, uh, this uh, uh, Dr. Savina. Um, Dr. Savina, uh, welcome to our conference and I hope your uh, talk will be a new thing for our students, which is very important, and they will get a new research direction. And that is the motto of IEEE Bangladesh section all the time. Thank you very much. Savina, floor is yours. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Shall I share my screen? Sure. Sabina, uh, this student branch has a women in engineering affinity group and Rabea Basri, the advisor of that affinity group is also present here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Celia ma'am, for the nice introduction. Actually, I feel honored to be part of this ITP conference. Before starting this session, I wish to thank the program, uh, the organizers of the program, and special thanks to Zelia Ma'am for giving me an opportunity to present my work. So the topic Sabina, have... first, for your kind information, our new chair of IEEE Malanda section, Professor Moshul Hawk, is also present here. Hope she will he, I will be introducing, I have introduced him now. Hope he will be providing a vote of thanks at the end of the talk. Please continue. Okay, the topic I have uh, chosen for today's presentation is artificial intelligence for cancer pathology. And uh, I think all of you will agree with me that AI techniques is witnessing a great boom in almost all applications such as healthcare, banking, data security, and in this transportation that is like uh, this one, the self-driving cars, so that is uh, whatever may be the field, the AI is being applied widely. So I have organized my content in three sections. So I start with artificial intelligence, I'm giving only a shallow introduction. Then I have new uh, two case studies that is lung cancer detection as well as mitosis detection. So moving on to the artificial intelligence, as all of you know, the, we can categorize this deep learning and machine learning under the head artificial intelligence. So actually artificial intelligence means we are giving artificially giving intelligence to a machine. So what is the main difference between the machine learning, conventional machine learning and the deep learning? So for for conventional machine learning, actually what we are doing is, we'll give the inputs and from the inputs, we will frame a set of rules and the network will come up with the required outputs based on the rules we have specified. But in the case of deep learning architecture, we are giving the input as well as the output and the model will create the rules and it will produce the exact outputs. I think these things are almost clear for all of you. 
So with this introduction, let us, uh, so I'm going to my research areas. So why I have selected the lung cancer and the breast cancer pathology? Because, so as you see from the WHO website, this is the mortality rate for lung cancer and breast cancer together. And in women, breast cancer is the common cause of uh, cancer due to uh, death. So this is the reason the picture explains or the, the statistics explains why the reason for what, what is the importance of lung and breast cancer. Then coming to the lung cancer, the detection in early, actually the mortality rate we can reduce if the detection is done at an early stage. And the most common diagnostic techniques we adopt now are just radiography, computer tomography, and magnetic resonance imaging. But in X-ray, there is excessive exposure of radiation. And for CT, there is high volume of radiation, strong radiation, and magnetic resonance, which is, even though it is less, uh, compared to the radiation aspect, it is less harm. The expensive-wise, the cost-wise, it is expensive. So we go for, actually our aim is to bring a non-invasive technique with a less cost. So we have selected sputum cytology analysis. And uh, for that, um, uh, I forgot to tell you, this is actually a collaborative work. We are collaborating with the Regional Cancer Center, Trivandrum, and they are giving sufficient data for our studies. So, Sputum cytology analysis, it is a quick and inexpensive technique and effective screening method of patients who are at high risk of developing cancer is possible with sputum cytology. So the, even though sputum cytology is non-invasive, it has many, many drawbacks. First one is its yield is low and there are irregular staining and unfocused cells and there are lighting abnormalities. So, and one, one important thing is we are using the conventional microscopes in our uh, medical hospitals and in local hospitals as well. So this, this traditional microscope, which causes a low SBP, that is space bandwidth product. That is, if we want more resolution, then the FOV will be small. So the problem statement we are concentrating is how a simple microscopy modification relevant on an engineering basis can be done so as to make it compatible with the sputum cytology and how we can save human life. Yes. So the scope of this, actually I'm first I'm describing the concept of Fourier tachography, then the detection part. So Fourier tachography was introduced as a recently a new technology. It was, which offered a simple computational technique that provides high resolution of images. Actually it is available for only costly microscopes. So we are making, we are trying to, we are trying to make that, that high resolution images using a traditional microscope. So this novel introduction would supposedly revolutionize the field of microscopy and make widespread cancer detection possible. And along with the AI techniques, it will remove the human error element as well. So first, then a small description of the Fourier tachography microscopy. It is a computational imaging method, which is capable of providing a scalable space bandwidth product for most existing microscopes without involving mechanical scanning or face measurements. And it improves the multi-image data to overcome the physical limitation of the system's optics. And the actual work is iteratively stitches a number of low resolution images in Fourier space to recover an accurate high resolution, high SBP output image in the spatial domain. Since we are incorporating this in a conventional microscope, it is flexible and a low cost approach to achieve high resolution wild field and quantitative phase imaging without any mechanical moving components or phase measurements. So thereby we can reduce the cost at a lower level. So the 
concept of Fourier typography. It is, it is the, actually we are replacing the actual light source of the conventional microscope and we are providing an LED array. Then this with the LED source of illumination, we will take in the images, a, a, a set of low resolution images we will be taken. Then we'll do the iterative stitching so the final result is we'll get an improved or high resolution image thereby actually it is similar to an image obtained with a large or high value of numerical aperture so the objective is an image reconstruction technique to increase the contrast of sputum images using Fourier typography and then with that images we are making a point of care medical devices incorporated with the advanced AI techniques for, for screening the sputum samples. Actually, this is the setup or the implementation. So from the, from a, using a control circuitry, we will move, we will, uh, we will control the LED array and we will take a, a number of low resolution images depending upon the a number of LED arrays. Then it will be, uh, using the Fourier typographic algorithm we have developed that will stitches all these low resolution images and then the comes the detection part so using the latest AI techniques we are uh, diagnosing whether the malignancy is present over the samples or the images so the hardware setup include this LED metrics and a control circuitry with Arduino and we have started with a, a student microscope at the starting, like the Celestron digital microscope. So this is the LED array setup we have uh, started with. So the single LED system is it requires less power and has higher luminance and any color range can be obtained and only a uniform 6 mm pitch across the entire board and control pins are also less. So these are the microscope kit and the Arduino setup. Then the implementation. So actually this is this implementation is with the student microscope. So the final setup is shown in figure. So it is programmed to illuminate seven by seven LED by turning on and off this switch. So the process is continued for and it, by, by illuminating each LED, the image will be taken and it is continued for all the LEDs and these images will be saved. And then the FPM recovery algorithm is executed and we are getting a high resolution image. So after getting uh, successful results, we have improved the microscope to a high quality microscope. No, it is, it is the scientific microscope that it is conventional microscope. So we have used the same LED pattern and, but instead of the switches, we have controlled the, the movement of the LED with another circuit. And the LED pattern, the LED array was programmed to light up using the different sequences using at mega 2560 and corresponding to each individual LED, a single image was captured. And depending on the number of initial images required, we can light up the uh, how many number of individual LEDs. And we have, uh, we have analyzed the LED pattern as well. So we have, uh, the, the, there is helical pattern, then row by row pattern, and the circular pattern also we have tested. And with the different LED arrays, seven by seven, nine by nine, eleven by eleven. So this is actually this is the uh, hardware setup we have used. So you now we'll see the results. So we managed to obtain enhanced images from multiple low resolution images, including sputum samples, and we also tried with the, so in the sputum uh, that is in typography. We have, started, we have experimented with the sputum samples, pap smear samples, and squamous cell samples, also with the mitosis samples. So, and we have done the analysis only for, for the time being analyzed only for cancer cells, the, uh, sorry, lung cancer detection. 
Then the lower resolution images had a resolution of 1320 by 1320. Then after the reconstruction, the that is the resolution has been increased to 5280 by 5280 and the 6964 by 6964. So in the final images, we can clearly see that there is a considerable improvement in overall discrepancy as well as the resolution. So we are actually, we are managing to improve the space bandwidth product. So actually these are the images with the different LEDs, randomly showing LED3, LED21, LED119, and LED64. So there are some different resolution images. So it means, uh, actually we are comparing the initial and final images. So it is with the, this image is with the, our usual conventional microscope, which has a resolution of 2048 by 1320 and a numerical aperture of 0.25. So after this, so we have uh, the output image obtained has a resolution of 6964. And that corresponds to a numerical aperture of 0 0.6, so 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 increase. So actually, we are tried with the, these images are with the four, this, this 20x magnification. So if it is with the 40x, we will get a more accurate image. So this is with the, another sample. Then for pap smear also, this image was taken using the original light source of the microscope, this, this image. It has a resolution of 2048 by 1320 and a numerical aperture. The, all uh, the initial images are of with the numerical aperture 0.25. And this is the reconstructed image with the numerical aperture 0.624. So this is another set of images that is from cell samples. So we are getting the output image like this. So, and we have used three different patterns, as I said earlier, the numerical aperture pertaining to different sets was found. So spiral pattern, column by pattern and row by row pattern, I have, uh, we have experimented. So these are the results obtained for, for, for a tachographic sample imaging. Actually for with the spiral images, the number of LED samples or num uh, uh, number of Im images we have used for reconstruction varies from 49 to 225. So with the spiral, with the time, time taken will be increases with the number of images. And initially it was the numerical aperture was 0.25. And finally we are getting as the number of LEDs, more, more and more number of, uh, more and more LEDs are included. The, the numerical aperture will improve to 0.4 to 0.6 from the initial 0.25. And from the table, it is clear that numerical aperture increases along with an increase in the number of raw images. And the pattern chosen seems to have no effect on numerical aperture. However, in terms of time complexity, the spiral pattern showed best results compared to others. Okay. And as far as the sputum samples for the detection part. So actually the normal cells look like this one and the malignant cells will be look like this. The, the first one is malignant and second sample is normal samples. So for that, actually we have tried with the traditional samples, uh, traditional machine learning techniques. Then final result, what I have shown here is only the deep learning uh, net, the results with the deep learning networks. And uh, we have used two deep learning networks. So that was given labels as malignant and non malignant. So these are the results obtained upon testing the models. That is, <coughs> the model is successful in identifying majority of cells present. They have identified with a, a box, a yellow box, then the results obtained with the malignant cells, this green box specifies the malignant or identifies the malignant cells and the yellow box specifies the normal cells. And the network used are 2D CNN, ResNet, and we are also used RetinaNet. 
but we are getting best results with the 2D network. Then six layers, tried with the six layers with the ReLU activation and uh, the output was softmax activation. The, this is the architecture summary of the deep learning networks we have used. Actually, it is also a type of transfer learning itself. And those are the performance messages. As, as usual, sensitivity, precision, F score, and accuracy has been evaluated. And this was the result with the psychographically enhanced images. So the future scope is installation of this Fourier tachography based analysis will be a great boom to various regional level cancer diagnosis centers and incorporation of cutting edge technology in the field of microscopy and it will promote uh, regional level research in this area and now i uh, i'll go to the mitosis section so i have included in another slide mitosis So is there any doubt in the, up to this one? I'll go to the mitosis detection after this. Or shall I continue, ma'am? Yeah, sure. Uh, so is my screen visible now? Which screen are you seeing? Let me know, please. Yes, it is visible to us. So are you seeing the breast cancer mitosis detection slide or the previous slide? Future, no, no. Previous slide we are uh, seeing. Uh, and now title of your slide is future scope. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. So has it changed now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now uh, we are you are seeing the female cancer statistics, right, sir? Yes, yes, yes. So what I'm showing is uh, female cancer statistics in different countries. Actually, this is with respect to India, I am showing. So you know, the breast cancer is the most prevalent form of cancer in our area. So. It is also from World Health Organization statistics. So the actually the death rate due to breast cancer in India, it is the statistics. It is mortality rate is high compared to the other countries like China and US. And in our area, that is Trivandrum also, breast cancer is the common cancer in women and accounts for 28.9 percentage of all cancers. So if we did not work on creating awareness about early detection of this cancer, the figure could be much more. Okay. So in case of breast cancer grading, there are, we are using three, three criteria, that is gland formation, nuclear ATP, and mitosis count. So among this, mitosis count, is the actually nuclear atypia means it is the deviation appearance of cell nuclei and mitosis index assess the number of dividing cells so all of you know this cancer cancerous means it is dividing cells so mitosis uh, assess the number of dividing cells seen in 10 high power field and the 
complexity that is compared to nuclear atypia, the mitosis is it has different appearances. The mitosis, mitotic cells has four stages. This from uh, this one from metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. There are four variation is there. Then the current detection method, analysis of biopsy specimen and manually by the pathologist and it, uh, uh, it is subjective to di diagnosis of sample. And since it is a, it, uh, subjective di diagnosis, it varies with the level of expertise of the examiner. And it is a tedious and repetitive as well as time consuming process. So the solution is computer assisted image analysis for quantitative diagnosis of tissues. Then, so there are nowadays, there are whole slide image scanners. So with the scanners, we are getting the images, right, the breast cancer pathology images we are getting. So the addiction challenges, I told you it is a complex biological process. This mitosis is a complex biological process. Actually, it is if we are with our naked eye, the mitotic and non mitotic nuclei is almost same. So, for main developmental stages are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So, in the prophase, it will the beginning, and the metaphase and anaphase are the intermediate. And in the anaphase, we can see almost uh, two nuclei, and at the telophase, it is truly separated. So our aim is with the artificial intelligence techniques, we have to identify the dividing nuclei. Mitosis detection. Okay. Is the challenges include stain variation? Actually, see the different stains. Some that depends upon the hospitals, it depends upon the experts. They are using different type of stains. So different that depends upon the stain manufacturers, stain practices, and the different storage type. So there is a stain variation in pathology slides. Then diversity in the shape of the nuclei. That is in the during the different stages as well as during in different cells. So the nuclear shape changes those lymphocyte, epithelial and mitosis. These are the different uh, cell shapes. So divided nuclei in the telophase has to account as single mitosis because they are not distinct cells. So in telophase, I have shown here, telophase, even though they are different, that is uh, two separate nuclei, we have to count it as a single mitosis. So that is the challenge in identifying mitosis detection with the AI technique. So I have started initially with the segmentation technique. Uh, I think it is almost time. I'll, I'll uh, rush through the slides. So there is imbalanced data. And the most challenging thing is there is imbalanced data classification. Suppose we are taking a pathology slide with the mitosis, there will be, suppose there is 400 more nuclei will be there, but among the 400 nuclei, two, three will only will be mitotic. So efficient classification techniques are required. So I'll skip all these slides. So we are uh, trying to uh, design an effective classifier models with the, the CNN or convolutional neural networks. And we are getting the data from mitosatipia data set and the clinical data set from regional cancer center. So for the initial parts, I'll start with the, the traditional machine learning technique. So we have done pre-processing of biopsy samples, like stain normalization, color space transformation, and vena filtering. Then, yes. Our uh, design of an optimal three point selection technique has been carried out. Then we have designed a nuclear segmentation technique. After segmentation, it is given to different classifiers. So these are the stain normalization technique. 
and I have compared the different stain normalization techniques I have used. Then color space decomposition, seed point selection, and the seed point selection. Selection. I have used to kill head. It's a bio inspired algorithm like bacterial foraging after so these are the uh, these are the output i have obtained after the seed point selection using krill head algorithm so actually this white patches represents uh, this one uh, the nuclei positions or nuclear locations so the then then i have done the segmentation based on the active contour modeling. So I'll show the results for segmentation. See, these are the segmentation results. So with the active contour, that is I have used an improved active contour modeling that is localized active contour. So these are the segmentation results for single nuclei. Then the visual comparison, see the here actually it is segmentation result is you have to see to segment it as two single two independent nuclei. So with the, the normal active condor, this will this will be the result. So that will be taken as a single one. But with the localized active condoring, we are getting the two adjacent nuclei in separate form. And my publications and i have improved the results with the, with the a multi classifier system as well as the transfer learning technique so the in the case of features in traditional technique we are measuring we are we are measuring the glcm features or the statical uh, and and this heraldic features so the feature selected, I have been a, a graph plot of this one. So these are the features of non-mitotic nuclei and these are the features of mitotic nuclei and almost it is similar in nature. So the classification challenge is high. So with the, with the normal or traditional classifier, we are getting only 81, 69 to 81 range of F score values. Then we have used a multi classifier system to, in order to improve that one. So I'll show the results that is based on the single classifier results. I have done another, uh, another one, uh, another um, feature extraction, and the, the, the output of single individual classifiers are the features. Then I have used an ensemble model. So based on that, a deep belief network has been designed. And I have got, uh, I have completed the random forest, then this majority voting based multi-classifier and this deep belief network based multi-classifier system. So the deep belief network multi-classifier system shows highest value of uh, the sensitivity, precision, and F score compared with the others. And then I have tried the with the usual convolutional neural network for mitosis detection. Of course, it was a pre-trained pre -trained model I have used to the CNN architecture. The, actually, I have used the GG16 architecture. So with the transfer learning, I have obtained the results. So I have tried with the different data sets of mitosis at TPA, that is NO3, NO4, NO7, and A10. They are all X, the 40X magnification images and also RCC images as well. So these are the F score values. And we are getting F score from 88 to 91. Sorry, the average value is 88. But for RCC images, actually it was a less in number. I get only around 50 to 60 images. So that's why the RCC images shows a low value of F score. 
but this one a node 3 and a node 4 sufficient data values was there a large number of nuclei was there so that has got highest value of f score then here comes the comparative analysis that is based on dbn mcs and cnn see the f score value for proposed method or that is the based on the transfer learning based cnn architecture will get will give you the highest um, highest f score and by visual results uh, actually we are showing the from an image we are showing what are the mitosis what are the normal cells so uh, nuclei shown in red circles are the true positives yellow circles are the false positive and blue circles are the false negatives so these are the two works i intend to present now I think it is time for discussion. I've taken five minutes more.